All right, man. One fight night, 23. Uh, we had Oak versus Razulov. That was the main event. And let's just jump right into it, Will. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. let's see some of this. Let's see some of this fight. This was a interim title fight, uh, except it wasn't. It was only for one person because uh, Razulov failed hydration. Um, so he could not win the belt, but Oak Rayun could. Uh, and this was a grueling fight, dude. These guys just... I mean, look... I know some people aren't going to be super stoked on this fight. I I thought it was super entertaining. Uh, it was fun to see just a straight up clinch war. It wasn't just like holding in the clinch. It was like a dog fight in the clinch. I don't know how Razulov just kept eating these elbows in the clinch. And then every time they'd break away, I thought Oak was landing really good combinations with his hands. Uh, I mean, look at these guys. This is the, the whole fight was these guys doing this. Yeah. yeah. I know it's not for I, everybody. I know yeah, it's not I'm for on everybody. the opposite end. Because for me, it's like, yes, I like good clinch work, but not when it's four straight rounds, the exact same thing. Right? I get That's that. my thing. Yeah. So, shout out Genevieve. you know, shout out uh, Ghost. Shout out hey, Genevieve. real quick, check out Ghost. Uh, he's got a new YouTube channel. Check that out. Check him out on Twitter, posting really cool animations of uh, combos, setups, things like that, breakdowns. Check that shit out because it's good. For sure. Oh, yeah, back to it. Shout out, Ghost. But uh, look, starts off, Rizzullo starts off with a nice little double jab. Uh, Rizzullo has a classic, you know, throwing long extended shots with his head down just to be able to close the distance. And once yeah. he does, man, he's grabbing on. You know, to your point, you know, you got uppercuts out of the clinch. You got elbows in the clinch. You know, uh, so th there was some action in the clinch. But again, just going four straight rounds of the exact same thing was kind of yeah. brutal. Going into the fifth round, you showed that clip, uh, the fifth round. Now, that fifth round was an absolute was banger. Dude. Crazy. Okay, you I don't know how you, combos. How do you have solid. the gas? How do you have I mean, the gas in the fifth after a grueling fight like that where you're pummeling and fighting for position, jockeying for position? How do you have the gas to just look, like throw down like that in the fifth? I know that there wasn't very much footwork, but still. Th yeah. That's a lot of energy that's expended in the clinch, right? Yeah. For Rizula, it's holding on to... Okrayun the entire time. Okrayun that's trying to push him away. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, the elbows. Both parties were landing some elbows in the clinch. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think by the third round, uh, I think this was an official stat. I have to look it up. Where did I see it? I don't remember. But Herb Dean might have broken the record for the most hand claps <laughs> and most times it worked by a referee you, already you barely did. through the third round. You did see that stat somewhere? Yeah, yeah. I can't remember where I saw it. Uh, it might have been Ghost, actually, on Twitter. I don't know. Uh, I'll have to look it up. But, yes, uh, that, that was an official stat. Yeah, shout out Ganskow. Hope you all had a good fourth. My fourth was hey, fun. You, it's warm Gansko. out. It's nice when it's warm. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there was pockets of this fight where you could clip together this fight and it looks like a straight-up dogfight for five rounds. Because every time they would separate, they'd start throwing their hands together. It was like savage combinations. Not, not yep. like the like methodical setups anything like that but it was just like swinging and banging and then like you said a lot of a lot of guys will a lot of russian fighters who want to clinch and want to get trips and things like that they will swing and bang just so that even if they overextend they have an overhook now and they can get into the clinch like that right most people will shell up if they're throwing these big shots um there was a lot of that going on um but uh i think yeah like you said overall i think it kind of Ended on like kind of like a weird note because Razulov gets the decision. Um, I thought I, I thought it was a coin flip to be honest going into it uh, going into the decision. Uh, really? I did just because it's not scored by round, uh, and I thought Oak was landing good shots. He was picking his shots, and I think maybe he was a little too comfortable and thinking he was landing good shots in the clinch that he was almost like accepting of that position because he's like, "I'm working well in the clinch. I'm fine with this," and I think that was his downfall dude the uh, agony of defeat in this picture look at that i know dude that's it's brutal not, it's tough dude uh but so so there's still no interim champ we still got christian lee uh out there i don't know it, it, it sucks i'm sure one was not super stoked they spent all that money on gold confetti and didn't get to let it out and Damn. uh prem fair Recycle texas it, with dude. their belt and then leaves bring with it to denver bring extra it. confetti in denver please yeah i'll that's... take it all but <laughs> Uh, you know, with uh, Razulov, uh, again, a lot of dirty work in the clinch, right? Um, yeah, dirty when boxing. he cut up uh, Okayun in the fourth, 
and Herb calls time for the doctor to take a look at it. Yeah. After that, I feel like Okayun came out with way more urgency. From that True. point yeah. on, at the end of the fourth, or not at the end of the fourth, but when they checked his cut, and he's like, Dude, they might stop this soon. I have to go balls to the wall. Then not fifth just round. That, but yeah, same and, thing. and not just not just that, but like when they stop it for a cut like that, that's like, oh, the judges are all watching me potentially lose this fight due to damage that I took. This is not a good look if this goes to decision. True. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, but also props to Razulov because in the very beginning, right, like I mentioned how he threw out those extended punches just to be able to close the distance. He clinches mm-hmm. right away. He couldn't get Okrayun down that first round. But the thing that he did do is threaten with the level change right off the bat. Yeah. yeah. Right? And so up until that fourth round, Okrayun's worried about the level change the entire time. So even when Razulov was closing the distance, Okrayun seemed a little hesitant to throw back himself because he probably just didn't want to get taken down. Then at the end he was like, "Yolo." Yeah, you know. Uh, he he just... probably thought, "I'm probably going to lose this decision if I don't go hard. I might as well. If I go hard and get taken down, I was going to lose this decision anyways." Exactly. For it, which is exactly. very cool to see. Uh, shout out Austin says, "Hey dude, he caught us while we're live. Hey dudes, look, the only thing that is definitive about this fight is that Christian Lee would dog walk both these dudes. Rizulov got catapulted to the spotlight. How does that? Uh, and does that way to lose fans, guy? <laughs> I like that." Yeah. I, like I said at the beginning, I don't think this fight was for everybody. Uh, I for did me. like this fight, though. I will not I, go back and rewatch this fight. I'm with yeah. Austin. I liked it. Uh, Blunderbub says, our boy uh, wearing one merch. We've come so far. Look at you. Look at you. <laughs> Hit him with the uh, do it again real quick. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so funny. That's like, uh, yeah, but yeah, that was that was pretty much it. Uh, I don't know what they do. I guess you become the number one contender if you're a Zulov. Uh, I guess I guess that's what happens. I don't know. Um, but Christian Lee, I would like to see fight soon. Hopefully, I would guess Mr. Chatri is not too happy right now. Not with this one. I don't think there's a fight later on though that I think did make him happy. We'll cover that a little bit later. Uh, I think this next fight made him happy too. We might uh, as well dude. move on. Carrillo versus Salmon Pet. Yeah, dude. Let's look at it. Let's watch so, it. So look, I, I went back, back and, and rewatched, rewatched this fight. fight. Rewatched, rewatched all the fights, fights the next, next day, day right? right? I was yeah. busy that night. But going, but going back, back and watching, watching it, it, I watched, watched Okun okay first, first and, went and went back, back to this one, one and I was like, like oh, thank God. God. <laughs> You're like, okay, it wasn't all just that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I love that part real quick. I'm going to go back, actually. Uh, Carrillo has Semipet like up on the ropes and just spams these knees. And I'm like, oh, this is probably it. Watch this left hand that Semipet goes back with after eating all these knees. God, it's so sick. He just takes like four or five knees up against the ropes, shelled up, and then just swings and bangs off of that. That straight, straight left, left, so that left hand. Too. Dude. And that's one thing that um, I will say. Uh, like, Carrillo is very good. He's huge. He's a massive guy. Um, but he, he, I think he's relying on that a little bit. And you might think, oh, Will, what are you doing saying that when he's steamrolled everybody he's, uh, uh, he's faced? And there's things in these fights that I'm seeing that are, that are bad habits that are developing a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Ganskow says Ramiro has echo. I think that's on me actually, because when I play the clips, I think the audio from his stream comes through. So I'll I'll fix that right now. But um, our bad guys. I'll fix, yeah, I'll fix that before we play the next clip. But uh, and thank but he you does Gans look Scott like he's in a different uh, weight class. He's massive, and, and look huge. A lot of people. A lot hate, of power. A lot of people hate Nico Carrillo. He's knocking out all my boys, but I don't hate him. <laughs> I don't hate him. He's huge, and it does suck to see when he's fighting these guys who are clearly smaller than him. Um, and he's steamrolling them, but I think that was like I Manny mean, that, Pacquiao for me back in the day. Cause yeah. I love Manny Pacquiao cause he was so good, but he was steamrolling all my boys, dude. Marco Antonio Barrera. Come on, Eric Morales. Why? Oh, <laughs> but Why? yeah, I, I <laughs> but he's so good, right? Um, he's so good. <laughs> but I think like there's things in this fight that he needs. I think hopefully he takes note of because while he was steamrolling Semipet, 
there was a couple times where he would get overzealous and he's because he his, he's a berserker, right? He just charges through everything and he's he'll step back. And every time Semipet would throw that left straight, like you were talking about, he was eating it. And his his yeah. his answer to it was to try to lean back from it. And it would just very little respect him. for Semipet's power. Well, very little respect. When you're, when you're that much bigger, yeah. It's probably not gonna do much going back at you. So you can have that lack of respect. But when he does fight somebody his size, those habits might catch up trouble. to him. It's gonna be trouble. Yeah, exactly. It might not happen. Maybe he fights different, completely differently when he's fighting someone bigger. Um, but that being said, enough hey, about the bring size that thing. same energy. Bring that yeah. same energy. You know what I mean? If you're gonna be fighting somebody everybody. your own size, just do it. Yeah, and look, they both made the same weight class, but but you know, I mean, clearly, I mean, look at look at Carrillo. The guy is fucking jacked. No, when he goes all crazy with the knees, though, that was awesome. Yeah, and then, but the fact that Seva Pet just ate all those knees and then bam, uh, Austin uh, says, "Okay, cool. It's not just me that thinks that." Then, if it dudes a weight and size bully, I'm gonna say it. I genuinely see Haggerty dropping him. People are saying Nico is gonna steamroll Super Lake. I don't think anybody steamrolls Super Lake, uh, even Carrillo, even with the size difference. Because um, I mean, Super Lake's a, a wizard. You can't just steamroll him. Blunderbub says he really let Nango chop his leg up bad in that fight. That's another thing. The, like the lack of respect for what's coming back hasn't caught up to him yet, but yeah. it can. It yeah. can. It, it might not. He might never. He might never face anything coming back like that where it really stings him. Um, but step in oh, the, dude. Yeah, they both land it too. The left That's hook. That's a good cast. shot. His left hook. Shout out one, by the way. I was about to say. I shout out one. I don't get the names of who's taking each photo from them, but I want to give them credit because the photos they get are crazy. And you'll see like different angles of the same moment. There's a couple of pictures in the slideshow tonight or this morning that uh, like you'll see the shot load up from one side and then the impact from across the ring, to the other side of the ring. And it's so cool. It's so cool. I wonder how many photographers they have going at a time. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Hey, one, uh, if you need one more, holler at your boy, okay? I'll take my Fujifilm Instax. Whoa, just dude. Take a picture, just like. Is that Polaroid? Yeah. <laughs> hold on, guys. Hold on. Because someone scanned this. Someone scanned this. They posted it. Classic. Uh, oh, this picture is a picture eventually... on Instagram. <laughs> Nico eventually gets to finish. Um, yeah, Semipet is a little long in the tooth now. He's smaller. Mm -hmm. This was kind of a foregone conclusion, in my opinion going yeah. into it um but that being said nico still did what he needed to do despite the the, the matchup um and then he gets a bonus uh he calls out he wants haggerty he wants uh super leg i think both of them are smaller i think haggerty's smaller than him uh but god damn one thing that i do want to see fun is, fights. is fun fights fun fights man and haggerty's teep is so good and nico just keeps walking forward throughout all his fights and he's just walking into that teep all night oh it's tough that's yeah. tough. I, I like those I style wise. Matchup. Wish they were the same size, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> so tough. <awesome. laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah. Do you want to move on to the next one? Yeah. What do we got next? Uh, uh, Rutolo versus Chen. Oh, dude, this was. I was actually really hyped for this one. Um, this was a fun one too. Yeah. They. This was grappling, right? Um, Rutolo obviously ties so good, um, but Chen. Is one of those guys he's from uh b team um mm -hmm. so craig jones uh disciple protege um and this was clearly a very it, like people have kind of talked shit about the grappling in one a little bit saying that oh their main guys get fed these guys that don't uh know what they're doing or shouldn't be in there with them but they've been really getting these fun matchups lately uh yeah when they got long acre in there that's great um rotolo versus chen is so good dude look at the guard and recovery honestly, look at the guard yeah. recovery dude rotolo just could not punch he couldn't yeah punch. um uh th dude there's this uh, a couple times where like one time rotolo dropped a knee on chen's forehead uh, yeah, another one where like he tries to jump over the butterfly guard and his shoulder landed right on chen's nose and i was like damn chen's getting beat up from the bottom dude <laughs> yeah dude who needs ground and pound huh a lot of smothering of the face with the hand, hand on the throat yep. from Ty. Like just, I mean, just very uh, strong top game from from Ty. He just couldn't quite get past him. Uh, really, one submission attempt that got kind of close was a, a leg attempt from Chen that Ty immediately 
immediately, excuse me. Uh, this is where he tries to go out of. Bolo. Look at that. Yeah, Denny. Yeah, so, oh, so close. But then he, t- but then he, oh, God, <laughs> it was just very good, dude. Very fun transition. Give me this over the Oak Ray University Razul I'll fight any day. Whoa, look at you. This is look so much you. fun, dude. It's so much fun. Genevieve says, I feel of... like you can. She says, I feel like you can really see Ty's uh, MMA training showing through his grappling now. Style feels different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I mean, just as we're talking about the knees and shoulders that he landed yeah. on Jen while Jen was on his back, that's perfect timing by Genevieve. Yeah, but it was a really fun, uh, really fun match, man. Really fun fight. Yeah, um, we got some pictures too. Uh, Austin says, uh, "I'm probably the biggest one fan here in the chat." <laughs> I don't know, man, uh, but we have to be real. The first six minutes of this fight, they were just pulling at each other on the feet. This isn't Ty's only boring fight. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's tough when two grapplers. Uh, I mean, look, shooting is never going to be like their strong suit, uh, BJJ, BJJ guys, but. Eventually, he got that double leg. I think there were six minutes on the clock when he got the double leg. Um, and I thought as everything after that double leg was fucking awesome. I, this For me, this was not one of his boring matches. I thought this was actually super sick. Um, he tried to hit the hip toss. That was cool. Uh, but Shen did a great job of just popping right back up. Um, but yeah, you get that that clinch, jockey for position, pummeling, all that stuff. Try to get snapped down, things like that. Yeah, the um, the, the fight for uh, risk control in the beginning was interesting. And look, mm-hmm. dude, I know I sound like a hypocrite right after I'm talking trash about <laughs> Rizzo Love versus Okay. You can do the exact same thing for four rounds, uh, but maybe but it's because I go in with different expectations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're over here, you know, just the simple things like that. I was like, well, who's gonna win that risk control battle? And then the yeah. uh, the arm snap that you were talking about, right, where he snaps him down. And I was oh, like, yeah. okay, well, the, there we go. But then Chen bounces off his face and bounces yeah. right back up. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that didn't work. So it, it's just a different kind of chess match. Yeah, yeah. And I love the urgency. As soon as he rolled for that leg, I was like, oh, my God. But oh, it, so good. You, you couldn't even process how close it was because Rotolo already spun out of it uh, and ended up on top. And when they went to decision, I was like, ah, dude, you could actually argue this for Chen, in my opinion, just because – and look, I know I'm a B-team fanboy, but – um you could argue it for him just because there was no there were no catches called, uh, so it goes down to uh, submission attempts and aggression. Technically, Chen had the one submission attempt. There was a couple times he rolled for a leg, but I wouldn't really necessarily call him attempts. It wasn't called a catch, um, right? But it wasn't called catch. Still, but there, the but there was we one. Saw. There was one that was definitely an attempt at a submission. It wasn't a yeah. catch, so it doesn't score uh, the leg lock like point on the board. Yeah, the leg lock. Yeah. So you could argue that you know Chen got that with the submission attempt but i think the aggressive top game from rotolo the takedown he was the one initiating takedowns uh that i think that aggression down, won him. the rash guard looked better uh, it's a good rash guard that's a nice rash guard i might just wear that next week instead of this just have right. a rash guard on like danaher dude Danaher just always <laughs> just wearing rash guards. He does. <laughs> so funny oh Yo, man. tell me tell me why this didn't work and i'm like uh wait what what do you mean tell me why it didn't work <laughs> yeah, can you just tell me dude <laughs> Danner is so tough to listen to sometimes. Cerebral, dude. So cerebral. cerebral. All right. We can move on to the next one. We had Kuyate versus Lessie. Oh, dude. Pour one out for my boy, Luke. Uh, look. Uh, we'll watch the third round. First two rounds, Kuyate is just lighting him up. Right? He's just lighting him up. Uh, Luke just could not get into a rhythm. But then that third round, Luke comes out strong. And they go, like the chef, he's cooking. Look at him. He starts, <laughs> I knew he, that was so funny. Yeah, he starts really pressuring him, starts landing these elbows up against the ropes. That uppercut, oh, that, that elbow. Uppercut. Yeah. You can see him I mean, hurt. In, he's, t- he's in trouble right now. They call it a knockdown. He wasn't going to. You could literally see Olivier say, all right, get up. And then he's like, wait a second. Yeah. Yep, yep. He's he's hurt. Because the way he was getting up, the body language. So he, got, he calls it a knockdown. And you're like, oh, my God. We might have he something here. the best, dude. Because sure. he lost the first two rounds. Two rounds. So the knockdown yep. might sway it if it's a draw, right? Uh, yep. But then with a minute left, Kuyate's like, oh, shit. He, he knows it also that they just called Boom. the knockdown. That uppercut as he's taking a step back. Yeah. Wow. Dude. Let's watch that again. Bam. And Lisi's just fucking done at that point because he was, he was getting battered, man. This was a tough yeah, one to watch. Looked- this is right here. He almost collapses again. Olivier yeah. Cost sees that, right? Because he, he's giving him the eight count. And yeah. let's see, he's walking towards the 
in the corner. So I'm like, okay, he's just going to give him the A count. But then he has that small dip of his knees where his knees give out for a little bit. And Olivier said, I'm the boss. I yeah. seen <laughs> I've seen enough. Yeah, I've and Austin enough. says, uh, am I the only one that thinks that should have been a slip? Uh, it was. Luke pushed him. He he mm-hmm. rocked him and then pushed him, and that's why he fell. Um, I and the body language, like he's like we said, Olivier was not going to call it a knockdown initially, but then the way he like wobbled trying to get up, he was like, "Oh, never mind. That was a knockdown, I guess." Uh, yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm hey, okay and that. you know, Mitch brought up a really good point in the beginning of the fight where he's talking about uh, Lassie being in five round fights, like the last mm-hmm. four fights he was in, I believe. And uh, I wonder how much of that had to do with his slow start on this one, right? Like, well, yeah, and I don't know. If, yeah, because he did start slow, and I don't know if that's very. because Kiyate was disrupting him so well, um, or or that, or it could be. Or he's, of he was used from his last four fights to trying to save as much energy in the first yeah. or second round to come in stronger in the third, fourth, fifth. Uh, we're in the you know three round fight here. He he was just used to starting a little slower. I don't know. Yeah, and meanwhile. Kuyate is just chipping away at him because uh, he was bloodied up, man. There's one shot oh, in here that's maybe my favorite picture, picture of the year. No, just oh, really? Wait. There's one oh, that is God. incredible. Favorite picture of the year? It Let's could be. See. It's not that Step one, but elbows, that's also very good. Very good. That one. Oh, wow. I fucking love that picture, dude. It's so cool. <laughs> For anybody just awesome. listening, not yeah. watching, uh, you should be turn, uh, tuning into YouTube so you can actually see the pictures along with us. But is that just like a spray of blood yeah going Kiate's way meanwhile genevieve's like fuck yeah dude look at (laughs) (laughs) um we actually have a shout out uh nick atkin was there ringside uh and he was posting clips um i believe he has a clip of the knockdown gansky i was talking about uh that i actually don't think he really pushed him watching again seems super close it was close um so Gansko, was it more of him like trying to post up on Kuyate before he threw another shot where Kuyate fell at the same time or I don't know uh, let's see uh let's let's watch it really quick um again shout out Nick Atkin uh for letting us use this and posting this so this is where uh Luke really starts turning it on right yep he's got him up against the ropes that uppercut, that uppercut the elbow uppercut again and then oh, here's the push right the here. Elbow. Bam. He pretty much Oof. pushes him off. He, he pushed him off. Which is fine. I mean, George Foreman made a career out of that, right? Um, hey, dude. Because he, he was lit up. He was. But I would say that is a push. That's a different off, angle. I, yeah, that's a good angle. Shout out Atkin, man. Yeah. Dude, he posted some sick-ass clips, man. And, and they didn't have that angle in the broadcast, you know? He seems like a good um, dude, too. Yeah, he's awesome. He's yeah, great. he's awesome. All right, man. Well, hey, fun fight. Kuyate is someone to watch. Kuyate, yeah, absolutely. 100%. He is definitely Easy someone to watch. Easy name to remember, too. Yeah, dude. Uh, Bunro says, not, Midwest not football Kuyates. dad as Muay Thai coach was never – or was a new one for me here. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Austin says, yeah, I don't know if that should be a count. Like, if Kuyate uh, didn't get the finish and Luke got the win off that, I'd be salty. Yeah, because he would have he would have got the win. It would have been a draw at that point because uh, the 10-8 round for the knockdown. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. and then it would have leaned to Luke. Um, I would have been fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> you could tell they put together a nice promo for Luke leading up to that fight, and it's like they're like, Oh, the one machine is getting behind him, as they should because he's in bangers every time. And then, man, didn't work out. This and time. another banger, though. Yeah, it was a fun fight. Fun fight. Fun fight. All right, uh, we'll move on. Let's see. Uh, who do we have up next? Was it Black Panther or Saldo? Uh, what do we got next? Yeah, so Doya versus uh, Black Panther. Black Panther. By the way, I just love how they just roll with the name, though. You know, yeah, like even on the screen, it's just Black Panther. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so uh, good. I love how they do that. Yeah, this this is uh, this fight was fucking awesome, man. Let's look at some clips because there was one shot where, um, again, shout out one for letting us show the clips, but uh, there's one spot here where. This is also on their YouTube, by the way. It's just their highlights for the event. But every time, so they're right here in this shot, uh, they're they're open stance, right? So Doyev's in southpaw, Black Panther's orthodox. But watch Soldoyev step through uh, into orthodox to land this left elbow as Black, which then opens up his the open side becomes the side of the left hook of Black Panther. Because right now, if Black Panther wants to throw this left hook, he's gonna hit that shoulder, the right shoulder right here, right? 
Mm-hmm. Um, but Soldoyev is going to step through, make this his lead leg. Uh, if you can see my mouse on it, it's small, but he's going to step through, make that his lead leg so he can throw an elbow, which does land, by the way. I don't Black Panther just eats it. Uh, but that opens up this side to the left hook of Black Panther. And that's kind of how Black Panther was catching him the whole fight. He kept stepping through and opening that side for the left hook. And fucking beautiful Black Panther just stepped back. And bam. Every time he'd open, catch him with that left hook. And let's watch it right here. It's going to be quick. Get ready. Bam. Yeah. The... Ooh. God, it's good. Watching, it, watching it live, I was like, what happened? Yeah, dude, he's so fast. Uh, he knocks he knocks him down again with that same left hook uh, right there, and again yep. it's when Black or Soldayev steps through to orthodox, and then the uh, the high kick, man, the high kick was fucking money, dude. Beautiful place. Should see it soon. Bang. Oh, head just bounces off the Let's ring. Watch that again, actually. Bam. Oh, so good. And this time it's on the open side again. Bam. Yeah, but you know also. Uh, Saldo, uh, Saldoev, let's uh, come in with a different angle, maybe. Well, he kept shifting, right? Because yeah. right here, right here, it's uh, he he's shifting back into southpaw when the kick comes. Like, if I can go back, okay, here we go. Bam! So he's motion. southpaw right, and then Throwing as in. he's retreating, so right now, if he tried to kick him, he he just catches his arm or his armpit or his shoulder, right? Um, and at, watch him, he throws it right when he retracts that left hand. Fucking beautiful, dude. Beautiful. And just bounces off his head. And that Jeez. was it for him. Um, Austin says super bond him. Exactly. Uh, super bond so good at that step back high kick. Um, but yeah, Black Panther, what a fucking performance by him, dude. Just a straight up masterclass in striking. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Black Panther was this I, the first event that I've seen with Black Panther on there? He was on Friday fights uh, a lot. I don't know. I think maybe his last fight was on Friday fights, and then he got a contract. I think he's uh, so good though. Yeah, I mean, fucking dude, awesome. all these guys ripped, shredded, dude. Yeah, shredded. Oh, yeah, yeah, his last fight was on uh, uh, Friday fights. Olivia, well, there we go, him. man. Yeah, fun fight though. That was sick. Uh, we can move on to the next one. We had uh, we're skipping a couple, right? Yeah, we're skipping a couple for the sake of time. We had Aleph versus Barbosa, and this is Barbosa coming back off a of suspension. Um, been out for a long time. Aleph is a young dude, but this was also a fucking banger, dude. This was so fun. It was, and in the beginning, I thought Aleph did a really good job uh, maintaining his distance with a. Uh, spinning back kick, teep kick, yeah. like everything, like right there, long body kick, right? Just trying to keep him at a distance that he liked because every time Barbosa got in close, everything was with a lot of power, dude. Yeah. Those close up hooks, power. And Vanderlei, dude. It looked like a mini Vanderlei when he got when he got close. It's a little tank. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like you said, a lift, the long range weapons in the first round were so good. And then the second round, Barbosa was like, all right, I'm just going to high guard or walk through everything so I can get close to land my hooks. Uh, the left hook, I think it was a left hook that he dropped him with uh, up against the ropes in the second round. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure they'll show it here. Let's see. Stephanie. Uh, There's that spinning spin. back kick. The Ooh. second round was a big round for Barbosa. Um, Good hands for all too, just, man. Walk, there, here it comes. Yeah. Damn. Oh, right up against oh. the corner there. So good. Damn. Uh, Speed versus power. I mean, he just went for – as soon as he could walk him down and trap him, it was just full-on berserker mode. And a lift you could tell, is trying to, like, do clever things like hand trap and things like that. And Barbosa's like, nah, dude. I'm just – I'm swinging. I'm swinging and banging. the body, too. The hooks to the body. Yeah. And then so, um, in the third round, uh, a lift bounced back. I, and I, and he won that third round. He had Barbosa really hurt. I think he would have got a knockdown if it weren't for the ropes. I think the ropes saved uh, Barbosa. Well, dude, when he had round. him up against ropes and uh, I lived through like what was like an eight punch combo. <laughs> yeah, dude, mixed it was in kicks with it too. Just spamming that button, dude. Same button yeah. over and over again. I think this might be it right here because there was one point where he ah oh, that spin, dude. There was one point where I thought Barbosa might be on his way out. Um, in that third round, but fucking Ooh. banger. Yeah. All oh, right here. here that one. Yeah, yeah. 
And then Alif just uh, went to war, dude. Alif pointed it out too, right? Yeah. Like he sat down on the rope and he pointed at him, like saying, "Like, hey, dude, like, saved I by the ropes." Alif's crazy, man. He's just legitimately flying at him throughout the whole fight. Uh, very cool, dude. Very fun fight. Big. I think that first round. Um, I mean, like I said, Barbosa was out for so long. Um, that first round was probably like, fuck, man. Like, can we have like a feel out round, please? I'm still trying to get used, get back used to this. And Alif was just flying at him from way out of nowhere. Uh, and then he kind of got more comfortable in the second round, but then Alif made the adjustments. Um, crazy fight, dude. Crazy fight. Not as crazy and then, uh, as the next one we're going to cover, man. Yeah, and they give Barbosa the win, uh, rounds one and three to Alif, I think, and then the knockdown in round two sways it because they can't have draws. Uh, so yeah, Barbosa gets the win and his comeback. Good, good win, good win. Yeah. So we mentioned earlier the fight that Mr. Chachi Senior Tong would probably be happy with. Uh, we mentioned a fight that was better than the last one we just covered. We had Ketchup versus Rogman, Rog Rog. <laughs> Wonderbook says, "Are we going to talk about the best heavyweight kickboxing match of the year?" We <laughs> uh, again, shout out Nick Atkin because uh, I can't find clips of this one uh, on the one, one's page, but Nick was there ringside, so uh, we have some footage we can watch of this one. Um, again, follow Nick Atkin on everything. He has a podcast on Sports Kita. Uh, his Twitter is a goldmine for news and back like behind the scenes access to the fighters at one. Uh, if you like one and you're not following him, uh, you're missing out on a ton of stuff. Rug Rug versus Butcher Ketchup. Uh, awesome name, by the way. Yeah. Ketchup from Senegal. I guess he's like a big star over there, internet personality type thing, but he's also a wrestler. They booked this for a kickboxing match. I think uh, people are like, how. Wow, they gave Rug Rug a title shot off of this. It's like, oh no, he already had the title shot against Malakin in MMA. This was just like a side project. I think my theory is that Ketchup has a fan base over in Senegal. Rug Rug, that's a market for him, obviously. Uh, let's have him fight someone big over there. Let's have him get a knockout, probably, uh, and get some more fans behind Rug Rug for his title shot. That was my thinking going into this. Um, they booked it kickboxing. Uh, uh, we could watch it. Uh, Let's do it. So we got Rug Rug here on the right, catch up on the left. Yeah. Uh, some interesting Chopping techniques. Chopping blows. Well, okay. Well, Will, what a lot of people probably don't know is that one of the uh, state sports or the country sports for Senegal is the uh, – it's called lamb. Yeah. And so it's like a mix of and wrestling with a couple other things. Yes. But one of the most popular approaches on that one is slaps to the chest yeah. as you're stepping in, right, Shoot before you inside, close the distance. Bro. Dude, what, what can I say, man? I'm cold. <laughs> and and uh, so as I'm watching Butcher Ketchup walk in, doing that, I'm like, dude, that reminds me of just the body strikes, right, in Lamb. So I wonder if he is just used to his uh, native sports or – and. Uh, mm -hmm. Realizing that it didn't work against Rug Rug as Rug Rug's coming in with a straight left. Yeah, <laughs> right down the pipe. Piston, dude. Uh, <laughs> Rug Rug, look, things can get awkward, right? When somebody is fighting you like that. You know, it's easy to get drawn into like some scramble thing and you get caught with something that you didn't see coming because it's coming from places that you're not used to. Um, Rug Rug did a good job of just being patient and stepping back and avoiding the bullshit and just landing his shots, picking his moments. Um, this was an interesting yeah. one from one here. Uh, also, Butcher Ketchup, they say on the broadcast, yeah, Butcher uh, means means Butcher like a, like, you know, like a meat butcher. Um, and uh, Ketchup uh, is because it's his favorite condiment. And you're like, oh, okay. I thought maybe it was like <laughs> something else. <laughs> Sometimes it's the thing that's the most obvious, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd just be Romero Mustard. You know what I mean? If I went to these fights, that'd be very interesting. Oh, man. But how do they get away with these nicknames? I mean, dude, that's... Uh... But it works. It works. Yeah, it works, yeah. I guess. Uh... The knockout 
Dude, what's so oh, interesting, flew, dude. too, because he flew. <laughs> he hits him with that straight left, <laughs> and he swept him off his feet, and he landed on his side. And uh, it was <laughs> it was so interesting. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I watched that replay I don't know how many times, dude. It looked like something out of a movie. You know when, oh my when God, like, dude. there's a crazy knockout in a movie, and they're just like, ugh, they go flying. Or, or like in a video game, Dude. and you're like, that's so unrealistic. That would never happen. And then you watch Butcher Ketchup get dropped by Rug Rug, and you're like, there it is. Bro, it was someone in Looney Tunes slipping on a banana peel or something, and they're like, <laughs> they're trying to run midair, dude. Like, and I mean that with no disrespect to Mr. Ketchup. No, it was awesome. <laughs> it was great. It was so and good. Look, he went in there. He knew his kickboxing skills. He knew what he was signing up for. And yeah. you know, he seems like a great guy. He, like his interviews and stuff. He seems hilarious. He, I'm sure he. It's taking this one uh, in stride. Uh, uh, did not lose any sleep over it. No, no. Great no. fight, though. I, yeah. I lost some sleep over it, though, because I just kept on playing that in my head over and over and over again. It was so good. Yeah. Um, I don't know what's going on with that, though. One, one hasn't posted any of the clips from that. It's like the only fight that they didn't post clips from. So I don't know if they're like, what do we do here? <laughs> What do I don't know do if maybe he, I don't know if maybe he like lied about his kickboxing experience, and then when they saw it, they were like, "Yeah, when you lied on your he resume, made a mistake." <laughs> when you lie on uh, your resume, dude, that that's actually a perfect one. When you lie on your resume, make that meme, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. All right, God. we'll move on. All respect to uh, Rug Rug. All respect to Mister Ketchup. Rug Rug. I am very excited to see him fight Malikin. That's going to be sick. Oh, that should be a lot of fun. Yeah. People shouldn't be. I see people knocking uh, Rug Rug for this and being like, he doesn't deserve a title shot off of that. And he's like, well, again, first off, he had the title shot already. And what more do you want from him in this fight? He did what you know he had to mean? do. Yeah. He did what he had to do. All right. Nothing in this fight makes it seem like he shouldn't be getting a title fight. It's just maybe the fight shouldn't have happened. This one. True. True. Uh, <laughs> yeah, look, <laughs> a blood buff says, look, man, if you could beat Butcher, Butcher Ketchup up, is Anatoly Malikin really a threat to you anymore? I don't think so. He steamrolls everybody else. Yeah. Steamrolls. Look. <laughs> All right. Uh, we also had a uh, Bleak over Skorodi. Yeah, Balico. Uh, banger. This is a banger, huh? Um, yeah. We'll... I mean, it wasn't Ketchup versus Rug Rug, but it'll, it'll do. It'll, it'll do. do. I'll allow yes. it. Uh, Battle of the counters, though. That left hook, man, from Balico, huh? Uh and right on cue, let's see. It's going to be quick because they clip it right before it starts. Bam. Boom. He's like, oh, no, I wasn't down. Was uh, he down? The... I don't think he was down on that first one. That was close. It was close. I mean, they he didn't gets hit it, with right? that left. Gets hit with that left hook, and then it looks like, oh, no. He was he not was down. Not. Hey, Olivier Cost, man, so good. But, man, he didn't I, that If left. I'm ref and I jump in there, I stop the fight, you know, this yeah, such a good job, such a good job. Yeah, uh, but no, yeah, uh, and then uh, for a while there, between Balico and Karodi, it looked like they were just taking turns with like mm -hmm. three punch combos. It's like pat pat pat, and then the other one would take a step back, and then the other one would come back and pat pat pat, just back and forth, back and forth. Such a good fight, man. Yeah, that was the final right there. Bam. Uh, I think the difference here was that Balico, like you said, they were trading combinations. Yep, and Balico would finish his combinations by exiting whereas karoti wasn't necessarily exiting um and you can see here the one that finished the fight uh i guess you can't really see it there but maybe we can see it in this one it's so fast though Wait, yeah so flips back yeah he throws a um he throws a like a low kick and then resets to throw his own left hook uh, like okay, so here he's orthodox, right? He throws this low kick, bam. Yep. And then he steps back and like goes to Still throw this left hook, Still which is range. actually oh god, look at that! Uh, out of nowhere, that punch, <laughs> dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's brutal, dude. But that's something that uh, Pedeta uses a lot, actually. Alex Pedeta, he'll throw his low kick, and then the swing back of the right leg is the leverage to then throw to generate that power to generate the whip on the left hook and that's yeah. what, exactly what you see karoti doing but it's not very tight it's like uh 
it's not one fluid motion and it leaves a big opening for that that one that straight uh, left oh man i mean just and then the way he flies back arms out extended uh, you know i was actually in california this past weekend will and uh, they rented a jump house for my niece's birthday and my mother uh fell off the jump house and fell off exactly like that oh arms no straight what? back rolls down the jump house dude it was madness it was madness she looked like karate chaos in california chaos in california good times good times but yeah uh shout out balico though yeah very that's someone i'm very much paying attention to uh because he's been sleeping dudes uh i'm very excited to see what he does next because karate's no joke dude karate's good uh he was just getting caught on these little like almost like mental lapses where he wasn't exiting like like Mm -hmm. dean thomas will talk about how uh you don't finish the combination isn't finished until you exit um and like it's perfect because you need to throw a combination you're stepping into the fire right because the other person could then you're in range right so you're stepping in the fire so every time you're you're combination punching you're in the fire uh and if you're not ending that combination you're still in the fire Mm. and if you're not ending it properly by exiting you're just you're there you're there for something if you're not a firefighter dude get out of that fire dude yeah Balico's a firefighter still one of the best yeah yeah it's good stuff hey everybody Ramiro and will here thank you so much for watching that short clip it's just a small clip of what we covered this last sunday yeah if you want to check out the full fight card recap uh the link is in the description and it's going to be on screen at the end here uh, and don't forget to go back and watch our fighter interviews that we have. Uh, and don't forget to tune in live every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and you can join in on the fun. Yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It goes a long way. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching that short clip from Story of the Fight.